What's going on everybody? My name is Joseph Alba and I was a Navy Corpsman from 2017 to 2022 and I'm here to tell you about my time in the Navy, the lessons that I learned and the experiences that I'd like to share along the way. This is the fourth video of a five part series. The first three episodes can be found down below. In the description. This has also been brought to you by Legend of Yamashita's Treasure, Legend of Yamashita's Treasure, a book that I wrote full of adventure, mystery, suspense, romance, and veterans doing great things Indiana Jones style. But anyway, so let's get back into the video. We ended off in the last video in the year 2019. Now comes 2020. So 2020 was a bad year for all of us. I understand that the YouTube algorithm is specific on its regulations of how people should talk about the virus. Let me be clear, I'm not trying to talk about any cures or any of that whatever. I'm there to talk about what happened to me during my time in the fleet at CLB4 during the year 2020. I had just gotten off of leave and I headed back in January of 2020. I was able to spend New Year's in Tokyo, which was great. I was there with Chris and Sal. I will say that I was dealing with a lot of personal problems back home. I'm not gonna jump on a soapbox right now and talk about those. I'm not really ready and it's not really pertinent to this video. Within the first few days of that year, I was sent to Hokkaido, Japan. So Hokkaido is that northern part of Japan and for the most part it's woods and it snows a lot and we were doing a snow training exercise with the Japanese ground self-defense force got there early with a what they call landing support specialist if you see a red patcher he does not actually have AIDS it is actually a landing support specialist and the reason why they have that red tape attached to their uniforms is because it differentiates the amphibious landing force from the grunts and those LS dudes. Their job is to bring all the cargo from the ship to the shore. And that's what we did in Hokkaido. We were offloading all the toys that the Marines were going to use for that operation. And we got there maybe one to two weeks earlier. And we stayed there, we stayed in a hotel, that was nice. As a corpsman, those missions with the LS are some of the most brutally boring. And since it was cold, it was brutal, boring, and brisky. One thing that people tend to forget in 2020 was the Iranian situation. I remember hearing on the news. There's exactly what was hit up there. The US military continues to do their battle damage assessment, trying to determine what was hit at both locations and whether there were any casualties. So far, we are not hearing about that, but that doesn't mean that that's not the case, Lester. That uh, all these bases in that region have been on high alert, anticipating some sort of reaction or retaliation. And I remember just the tension with Iran skyrocketing we were at that point i i don't think it was completely serious but it got to a point that was probably the closest i've ever been to saying hey like it's time to go we're about to go to war with these people like i'm not here to tell you about me being a salt dog or anything like that it was definitely a hot situation though and i think it could have turned a lot worse if cooler heads didn't prevail but anyways went to hokkaido after we got all, all the gear kind of gave it to the rest of the marines i met up with the rest of my battalion took part in sit call a little bit of operations mostly dealing with cold stuff i was pretty experienced with everything that needed to be done and that's kind of where i was put into more of a leadership role taking care of patients mentoring other people during my time over in hokkaido which was from from january to february Australia was on fire and we heard about this thing called the coronavirus and we didn't think much of coronavirus I don't think any of us did at that point I remember first seeing it on a Spongebob meme on reddit unfortunately it took a turn for the worst since I was the first one there to Hokkaido I was the first one back and some of my corpsman team had to stay behind when Japan went into lockdown during that time <laughs> One of our poor dear corpsmen had to stay in Hokkaido for 
a solid three to four weeks, if I remember correctly. His whole routine was basically staying in bed, self-quarantining, and things of that nature. It was going into March, and Japan was going on lockdown. Some of the goods were, we had the ability to only work every other day, so it gave us a lot more rest time. But the bad was, the international relations that had to be dealt with between the US Marines and the Okinawan government. So let me lay out the groundwork of what was going on at that time. So the Okinawan government was starting to blame us for being one of the main factors of transmission of the disease onto the island. It was pretty easy to scapegoat. We had to maintain a very prim and proper relationship with the Okinawan government, and we did. What that meant was, the restrictions were insane. And it was, you know, pretty standard fare of what COVID was like all over the world. But if you didn't pay attention to those rules, you'd be screwed. Um, I remember people were getting busted down ranks because they had more than, I think it's two people in the car. But that's just the way it was at that point. But that didn't mean that the operations weren't stopping. So we still had those field exercises and I would be told to go to those. I'd volunteer for them because I love being out in the field with the Marines. Thank God we didn't have to wear those masks. We were still able to operate in a socially and politically sensitive environment, um, especially with all the regulations that were coming down from the CDC into the military and the regulations of the Okinawan government. It was a headache to be sure. So this went on for March, April, May, June. June kind of started to lighten up a little bit. But we all know what happened in June 2020, especially for those who were in the United States with the, we'll call it the incident with the cop. I'm not getting paid to do YouTube yet, but I just want to be as respectful as possible online. But yes, this was during that time with the fallout of what was going on in my own country that I was sworn to defend and seeing it basically tear itself apart that that got to me and that's one of the many reasons why I decided to not re-enlist in the Navy and get out and try and make something of myself in the civilian world is because our country is based on the principles of freedom and freedom can be messy at some times and people can make mistakes but we're at a point where we have lost faith in each other as people, I want to do the best that I can to fight against that because I signed on the dotted line to defend my country, but now it's time for me to keep it from collapsing within. <sighs> Again, no trying to get on the soapbox. Yeah, that was a rough time. That went on for a few months, and that was a time with, um, I think it was with the Chaz. And I remember seeing like the National Guard roll down the streets of Hollywood, and um, it was difficult to see that, especially being in another country, just watching your own country burn like that. But as that was going on, COVID was still going on. That's when they stood up the COVID Response Center, and that's what I was a part of. So the COVID Response Center was this big initiative for the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force, basically anyone in Okinawa or Hawaii, and um, a little bit of like Iwakuni, Japan. We would come up with a kind of like a tactical operations center but it was dedicated to tracking monitoring and caring for those who have been affected by the virus and needed to be isolated or needed to be quarantined and initially it was an absolute shit show but that's with everything in the military the first time is not going to be the best time working with a variety of different marines both officer and enlisted and warrant officers as well which was crazy we got to a point where we set up a very good rhythm of maintaining and making sure that the people who needed to be quarantined were quarantined the people who need to be taken care of were taken care of and the people that didn't need to be taken care of were not taken care of which is also important because this is that time and everyone who was getting the sniffles or throwing up or anything like that everything was off the table it was either covid or nothing but i had a lot of responsibility to take care of the people who were sick and my job as the corpsman was to monitor who was sick who was not who was in the quarantine um, what the temperatures were how were they feeling that kind of stuff i talked with a lot of 
people that were higher ranking than me briefing them on the situations and stuff like that and it really got me into that mindset of the bigger picture of things which i thought was pretty cool and i'm kind of proud to share that so with everything shitty going on in okinawa during that year there was one great thing that happened for me personally (laughs) and that was tinder no in all reality During those times, I think a lot of us were feeling very lonely and reached out through cyberspace to attain levels of human intimacy that were not otherwise seen. So I downloaded Tinder. I became very exposed to that human connection, but nothing got to me more than me being able to meet my now now my fiance at the time of this well her name is mia and i remember i was being such a man hoe that i decided to use the travel button on tinder because i was in okinawa anyone who's in okinawa knows the dating pool there so i decided oh i'm gonna go back to los angeles swipe there and see where it goes and i swiped on this 19 at the time swiped on this 19 year old girl named Mia and she was looking she was looking fine and I hit her up with um, and I hit her up with some cheesy lines and we eventually got on to uh, video chats and um, I remember talking for hours until my phone literally was about to catch fire it's one of those like temperature warnings on the phone but we continued to talk and we set up like, virtual dates because that's what everything was going to at that point in 2020. And I had eventually had such a great connection with her that I wanted something serious with her, but she was in Los Angeles at that point. During my time in the Navy, I knew that I wasn't gonna re-enlist. My enlistment was up in February of 2022 and I knew I wasn't gonna re-enlist. So I had about a year left on my contract. The Navy only has three year contracts if you wanted to PCS and I was up to change my station from Okinawa to something else at the end of 2020. So I elected to stay on another year in Okinawa and I told Mia at that time I was like hey I'm not gonna be in the United States for another at that point I was talking to her it was like another year and a half she was like okay we can keep it casual and we don't have to make it serious or anything like that. I thought that was it. We'll get to that later in the next video about what happened my last year of the Navy. But I would change stations from Okinawa, Japan to Little Creek, Virginia. It was a blue side command, but whatever. I messaged Mia and I was, I told her, hey, I'm coming to LA for a couple weeks. Would you like to pick me up from the airport? Either because she's just as crazy as I am. She said yes to that. And by December, when I was ready to change stations, I said my goodbyes to everybody. It was super emotional at that point. And I'm always going to miss Okinawa, Japan. But I'm on to bigger and better things. I'll always have a sense of nostalgia. Not every day in Okinawa was a good time. <laughs> um, I'd probably say maybe less than 50% of it was a really good time. That's the way things are. And I was ready to move on with the next chapter of my life. And at that point, I flew from Okinawa back to Los Angeles for my time in leave. And that's when I met for the first time Mia. And now I can call her my fiance. I'm gonna cap it off at this point. It's gonna be, it was a lot shorter than my other video. Definitely probably a little bit more watchable. (laughs) If you like what you see, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It means a lot to me. If you want to be in the military and you want to have experiences like mine, you have to have the right ASVAB score. Luckily for you, I actually have a Fiverr down in the link below that you can use to get tutored by me to increase your ASVAB score so you can be all that you can be. Thank you for watching and for love of all that is good and a God-given duty to protect it. I'll see you guys in the next one.